Good morning and a welcome to Mystical Teachings from the Tanya. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine coming to you from Chabad Zichrin Kadeshim in Montreal, Canada. It's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the Tanya. We say good morning to Crystal from Florida, if I remember. Do I remember that correctly? <laughs> Remind me. John from North Carolina, Shalom. And Diane, good morning to you in London, Ontario. Denise and Linda Bokertov, all the way from New York. Uh, Hannah from Manchester. Okay, I hope uh, everyone's doing well. I hear only good news. Uh, Andrea, good morning to you in Phoenix, Arizona. Diane says there's lots of snow in London, Ontario. Well, we had overnight about 10 centimeters, which is about um, four inches of snow, maybe a little more than that. I'm not certain. Yeah, so we woke up to snow too. Irma in St. Martin, beautiful, sunny, Dutch Caribbean. No snow today, I guess, huh? Well, no, better luck. <laughs> Just kidding. Art is with us from Michigan, also snow covered. Pawix is uh, in the Philippines, where I'm sure it's not snow covered, but it's a good evening. Ever can Norway? I'm sure it's a little chilly there. Shalom. And Anna from Hungary. Welcome, Heidi. Lots of snow. Where? Well, it looks like it's a uh, it's a snow. Our snow country, Batya and David in Montreal, welcome. Rena in Colorado, I would imagine some snow over there. And Katie, good morning to you in Texas. They still have a lot of snow and they're supposed to even get more. For them, I, uh, I uh, feel bad because they're not prepared for this. No snow in Phoenix. And Andrea is saddened by that. <laughs> Eugenia in Calgary, good morning. Heidi, good morning, and Joe, Boker Tov, Carolina, yeah, from Montreal, good morning. Very nice, Denise. Uh, Alice is in Baltimore. Welcome, Patricia, shalom. Molly in North Carolina, good morning, and Omar is with us in Texas, shalom. Michael in Charleston, South Carolina, good morning, Marjan. Uh, southern snow here, so del you got snow. Wow, in Atlanta. A southern snow. I don't know what that probably means. Like it melted before it came down. <laughs> Alice, no snow in Baltimore. That's pretty good. Okay. Andrea in New Jersey with us. And Robin in New Mexico. Hello. Ooh. Hannah. Have confidence and trust in Hashem, I guess, and do whatever you got to do to make sure everything is good. Pamela in Oakton, Virginia, shalom. Uh, Dina in Brooklyn, shalom. Heidi, lots of snow. Oh, here in Montreal, okay. Yes, okay. Yeah. Virginia, uh, lots of snow. And it's getting hot over there. Minus 14 rather than minus 30. <laughs> Uh, it's not real snow. Yeah, I didn't expect uh, it would be. Not our snow. Okay, uh, Zishan in Pakistan, welcome. And yeah, in Mexico. Okay, folks. We conclude today, chapter 30. Chapter 30 in one word. Shuffle. Having a lowly spirit before every individual is what we're speaking about and to put things into proper context tomorrow we're going to go into joy <laughs> right now we're still in the mode of dealing with the negative force that i have in me called the animal soul also called the evil inclination that um doesn't want me to connect to god doesn't want me to live a life of goodness wants me to lead a life of indulgence, pleasure. 
Now, that indulgence and pleasure might be in doing something good, but it's, it's all about me feeling good about myself rather than being good and doing good, um, which is the godly soul, what it desires. So sometimes it can get us down. And we don't have the spontaneity and the joy that we need to have and the, the love and awe in, in, in the good that we do in connection to God. And sometimes we need to talk to that negative side of ours, as we did in chapter 29. And in this chapter, to have a further um, awareness to allow us to humble the animal soul. And here it's about humility. And humility here means, in, in the deepest sense of humility, that you feel that you are not just that you, that you sense that you are, not just that you uh, behave that way, make believe, but you sense that you are lower than any other person. And we're speaking about the Bainini over here. You know, <laughs> if you're indeed very removed from a relationship and a connection to God, very much removed from Torah and mitzvahs, the fact that you feel that you are lower than others, well, that, that's, you know, um, not quite a, a statement, but here we're talking about the Benini and us, me and you. Benini in training, that we have this sentiment. So what we've explained till now is um, when we will understand that we only judge another person when we've reached their place, statement from Pirkei Avis, of the Ethics of Our Fathers, uh, and as the alternative explains, what does it mean their place? So it means their environment, their outer environment, and their inner environment, meaning their natural character qualities that they've been endowed by God Almighty. So when we understand that, so they're in an environment that is not a wholesome environment, so that of course, you know, if you're raised in a, um, you know, uh, I don't know, all, we can all imagine, in a very unhealthy environment, abusive environment, or uh, raised in, uh, or you do your work in a place where, you know, it's uh, not so wholesome, and therefore, you know, obviously your eyes uh, are going to be engaged in things that are not wholesome, and that's going to lead you to uh, the desires in your heart that are not good. And added to that, if you have a very passionate kind of heart, um, a passionate kind of heart, passionate not for good, but for lust. You have a passion for, you know, lustful things, um, and that's then triggers you, you know, that, or just whatever it is, you know, someone looks at you a little crooked, so you get all, you know, out of sorts. So when we look at that person, we need to know, hey, what they need to struggle with is far more just to like have any semblance of human decency. Far more just to be a half-decent person. Um, than the Benini, who, you know, we're talking about someone who's got complete impeccable behavior of Thought, speech, and action. So the alternate bit continues with this idea. How do you humble yourself that you should um, humble the negative part within you, again, the animal soul? So saying to yourself, do I um, do the grace after meals, make blessings with real intention? Am I really focused? Or when I'm doing a, a mitzvah of, um, am I really doing it for God's sake or am I just like, you know, doing it for my benefit? Similarly, studying Torah. Am I struggling in the struggle of Torah? Struggle meaning struggling in the positive, that I'm really breaking my head over this to get it. Am I really being diligent in my study? Or am I just doing something that's habitual? Now, 
again, we're talking about the Benini. So the Benini studies Torah. The Benini is making blessings. The Benini is engaged in divine service. But am I doing this out of habit? Or am I really matching the struggle of this Kal Shebekalim, this simpleton of simpleton, this removed individual who is, again, as we said, doesn't have a good character qualities and is not found in a good place in any, uh, in any respect. And for them just, you know, to eke out a smile from time to time or uh, not being negative... It's a huge struggle for them. So, in other words, my battle has to be um, that I've got to conquer my impulse. My impulse is, um, you know, when I'm studying, I study, but I'm doing it in an habitual way. I'm not uh, overextending myself. I'm not, you know, really working on that focus that I, you know, don't miss a thing. And with my prayer that I'm, you know, focused and making it really a meaningful prayer and not just, you know, words that were said. So this is what the Bani is, is thinking to themselves, or we should be thinking to ourselves when we are looking at someone who is very removed. And remember, the only reason why we're looking at that person who is very removed is in order that I should become humble before them and not think myself greater than them lesser than them actually which we'll get to that in a few moments and again why are we doing this to humble the negative part in me because it i'm not full of life and it's bringing me down i need to be full of life so now the other bit brings over here and says well you know what Wait a second. Let's move back a second. You know, you're if you're comparing two people, right? And you're comparing this Kal Shebekalim, this simpleton of simpleton, this uh, uh, unworthy un of unworthy, like very, you know, person who's doesn't got much of a life together for themselves, compared to the Benini. He's got it together, you know, behavior. Remember. So we're, we're saying that the Benini, in doing good, could do a lot more, could really engage more in their Torah study, right? Could, in their blessings that they make, they could be a lot more focused, all right? And compare that to the Kal Shibakalim, this simpleton of simpleton. That's about, like, just removing that person. They're, they're just trying to remove themselves from, you know, not having a, a negative evil thought, an erotic thought, because they're working in an immodest place, so, you know, and uh, for them just to struggle to stay away from, you know, the nasty remark, uh, not about good. So you might say, well, look, how, how can you equate the two? This is about just, you know, refraining from doing something evil that they have to struggle so hard. I have to not refrain from evil, the bane and e, but I have to exert myself with greater, uh, in greater proportion, you know, to be equal, so to speak. But hey, this is about good. This is about just like staying away from evil. So, from a human perspective, that's correct. There's a huge difference, obviously. How can you compare the two? But that's only from a human perspective. You know, this is great reward. Okay, so I won't, I'm not rewarded as much because I didn't, the good I could have done much greater. Yeah, but in the end, I did study Torah. This person's not even about studying Torah. This person is just, you know, they bite their tongue because they're, you know, every third word they uh, is a swear word. So, uh, you know, and for them to not say that is a huge struggle. So, uh, you know, sometimes they eke it out and instead of saying that nasty swear word, they, they don't do it. Well, yeah, you know, that's that's only a negative thing. So, so Altareb says, that's true from a human perspective, but not from God's perspective. From God's perspective, what's the difference, this or that? He wants this, and he wants that. This is where you're at. This is what he wants. This is where this person is at. This is what he wants. No difference. 
from a human perspective, well, this is a greater accomplishment and this is just merely not being so nasty. No. From God's perspective, there's no difference. If it's about you, so then you make a difference between this or that. If it's about God and what he wants, he wants both. It's his divine will. His divine will is exert yourself to do a mitzvah better, and his divine will is to refrain from doing wrong. Both. Positive command, negative command, right? And that, so here we're comparing, you know, the good in verse, uh, of the Benini versus the negativity uh, refrain of the, uh, the person who's removed. But even when it comes to negativity, I mean, the Benini still has a struggle because, you know, how much you struggle when it comes to a pleasant word to hear that might be mm, gray area of gossip. Not really gossip, but gray area. As uh, Talmud tells the story of Reb Shimon said to his father, to um, Yehuda the prince, Yehuda Anasi, the author of the, uh, the Mishnah. So um, it was concerning a document, a bill of divorce that was improperly written. So um, Shimon says to his father, well, I, I didn't write it. Yehuda the tailor, the, uh, he wrote it. Now, he was saying that to vindicate himself because he indeed didn't write it. And his father was, you know, telling him, um, you're responsible. So, well, I'm not responsible. He vindicates himself, but he doesn't just vindicate himself. He also points a finger at someone else. It's a, uh, it's a uh, gray area of, um, of speaking Lashon Hara because, you know, maybe the father needed to know because if he's looking to know, that he's thinking that it was him and it wasn't him, he needs to know, eh, it's a little gray area. So actually his father then says to him, uh, keep away from slander. In other words, to, as, to keep away from slander is not such a simple, easy thing. The vein in the, you know, is, again... Very careful, but, you know, sometimes there's gray areas and not so simple. Furthermore, the Alter Rebbe says, um, sanctifying yourself in areas that are permitted, so how much does the Benini exert themselves, right? How much? So, the point being over here is that, yes, the Benini can compare themselves to someone who is m so far removed from their level of observance and their level of commitment to God and their level of doing good for God Almighty, still can compare and say that I am humble before them. Right? Because, again, how much am I exerting myself in the positive versus this person, the Kal Shebekalim, exerting themselves just from refrain of negative. But the other of it says, I ask the question now, well, that would make sense, all of this, that you can say, well, I don't exert myself well enough or, or um, appropriately enough in the positive compared to this person who's in the negative territory. Fine. So we equally don't. But why should I be lower than the other? Why should I consider myself to be... Sh as uh, This is a statement from the sages in Pirkei Ovis, in the ethics of our fathers. So this is a, a well-known statement. To be um, low in spirit, humble, before every person. So Why? To be equal is one thing. Not to, not to feel that you're higher even though you're more observant. That makes sense. To be equal because I'm not exerting myself as much as I should in the positive as this person is exerting themselves in the negative. But that's only equal. Why lower? That's the question. So the alternative says, well, very um, simply is Because the, the, street, the street squatter, 
as he gives it by way of example of the individual, right? Meaning, not the the, the scholar in the in in the yeshiva, right? Well, they don't know any better. They're um, they're not close to God that they should know better. But the Bainini, who devotes their lives to serving God, knows better. And therefore, uh, knows that they need to overcome their natural, uh, ten, uh, you know, uh, uh, habitual ways and to truly serve God. Know that. Well, if they know that, then they need to exert themselves more than the person who doesn't know that, like the street squatter, the Kalashibakalim, the simpleton who is removed, who doesn't devote their lives to God. And then from time to time, they're, you know, exerting themselves to try to do something, you know, not so nasty. So, therefore, there's a greater responsibility. Um, the sages tell us about Acher in the Talmud. Elisha ben Avu, um, he was more greatly punished for um, removing himself from, from God because he knew his glory. Therefore, he's far greater guilt. By way of metaphor, I give. It's like, you know, someone who makes a, uh, a nasty remark and they're 40 years old or six years old, well, and, and they're similar, or maybe they're, they're different, right? Six-year-olds was even nastier than the 40-year-olds. But a six-year-old's a six-year-old. Yeah, you gotta teach them, but they're not truly responsible. But the 40-year-old, truly responsible. It's an adult. Adult needs to know better. So the Bainini, who is devoting their lives to serving God, needs to know better. And with this, the Altadev concludes and says, the sages in the Talmud declare that the illiterate person, right? Again, like this person, the squatter, <laughs> the, the um, and, and, and squatter does it, you know, just to give the indication of what we're, we're talking about, you know, kind of person that is removed from divine service. Um, that their deliberate sins are regarded as inadvertent sins. Why? Very simple. They're unaware of the gravity of the sin. So when this individual speaks Lashon Hara, speaks ill deliberately against somebody, our sages say that this is considered inadvertent. They go, well, what do you mean it's inadvertent? It was deliberate. They don't know any better. Or they don't, not that, it, they know it's wrong, but they don't know the gravity of it truly. They don't, they don't, they don't. They're people of the street. You no, know, they're people of, who, by the way, street today doesn't mean you're out in the street. Street means that the street comes into your home. Through all the television shows and you know Netflix, <laughs> means the street is your world. Well, if the street's your world, you're not going to have a sensitivity. Now, after you've seen what was it that at the age of twelve, I, mean, I read this thirty years ago in Reader's Digest. At the <laughs> at the age of twelve, um, a twelve-year-old has seen ten thousand you know, um, murders and the like, you know, on television. Well, what kind of sensitivity are you going to have? I mean, obviously, it could work the other way around too, but for the most part, it's not. You become desensitized, right? The point being over here is that um, when the outside world becomes your world, so then you're not really a true servant of God. And in that sense illiterate of the ways of God, therefore, as our sages say, deliberate sins become regarded as inadvertent. 
And he went, oh, thank God, I got saved. Hmm. I don't know if that's called being saved. <laughs> that's not, you know, I, you want to remain illiterate? And you want to remain not a servant of God and not connected in that way? Now, on the other hand, someone who knows better, like the adult, their inadvertent sins are considered deliberate. It's the opposite. Because they're an adult, because it's a bainini who d devotes their life to serving God, so if they're inadvertent about their habitual service, well, that's considered deliberate. They know better. So, the Alta Deva concludes that contemplating this, so the, uh, this truly, the, uh, you know, server of God who is a scholar will be able to fulfill what the Mishnah says. What does the Mishnah say? As we said in the beginning of the chapter, be lowly of spirit before every person. Why? Even that person that is far removed, I'm going to be, feel more lowly because I know better and I'm not exerting myself the way I should as equally as, as the other person who's on the other side exerting themselves. They don't know better, though. So I'm more responsible, and therefore I feel more, I don't feel greater, not equal to them, but lesser than them. And again, just to remember, why are we doing this? For only one reason. Why is this conversation happening in our, in our heads at all? which only after we've fulfilled 29 chapters before this, for a very simple reason. We want to humble our own negative spirit, the sitter acher within us, uh, the animal soul, to enable the light of our godly soul to permeate us, to bring us to true joy, which will be forthcoming. Very powerful. I know now that. What do we know now? And this is why, as Denise says, Moses, my Rabbeinu, was the most humble person. Heidi says, beautiful. <laughs> I like this, Heidi. I don't own a television because I don't want to allow just anyone into my home. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. But she says, I know now that I have to be humble in spirit before every person because I have a greater responsibility to exert myself more because I know better. To, much, to whom much is given, much more is required. Beautiful. Ignorance isn't bliss, as they say, right. Anna, I know now that from God's perspective, everything is of a value. It is my perspective when I consider everything lesser than me. Also, I know now that the Benini in training, or Benini or us Benini in training, is more responsible and accountable for their thoughts, spe uh, speech, and action. All right, very good. Katie, um, when comparing oneself to another, the Benini considers uh, themselves lower than even the street squatter. Because the Benini knows better and knows how he has much uh, much self-refinement that he still needs to work on. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Yes, Crystal from Australia. Thank you for reminding me that. Who is going to share with us today? Katie. Or Crystal. Lisa. Who else? Andrea? Oops. Okay, I lost it here. Uh, 
Um, Eugenia, I know now that Hashem wants an effort from every person. However, people of a higher moral standing are more accountable for their actions. Well said. <laughs> All right, Katie. Not a problem. Got it. <laughs> okay. All right, folks. Um, okay, I don't see it's not uh, no, not working for me over here at this point. But, folks, please share. Sharing is caring. Reminder: um, Yeshiva at twelve noon today to one thirty. Uh, twelve forty-five. I'll be teaching to one thirty, starting to learn about Purim, the holiday. Um, from a mystical dimension. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine coming to you from Chabad Zuch and Kedoshim in Montreal, Canada, where it's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you, Tanya. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for joining.